take your coffee break with me. Come and take your coffee break with me. Come and take your coffee. Come and take your coffee. Come and take your coffee break with me. Welcome back to Coffee Break with Candace. We're so glad you're joining us this week. I have another amazing guest. I'm, I'm going to let her introduce herself and tell us more. Hi, my name is Gwendolyn Wilson. I am affectionately known as a turning point strategist. I'm a life and business coach, a speaker, heartfelt speaker, and an author. And I currently work with wonderful women who are um, sharp, um, savvy, intelligent, highly functional, and it actually are wonderful women that are building their own business. And as a result of what they do, I have found a way to actually utilize what I've gone through as um, being downsized and dealing with um, a loss of job and finding that our what we know, what we already know, our expertise, our talents, our education, our skill set, and all the things that you've acquired in the profession, in your professional life, are marketable. They're valuable. They're resourceful, and they and and because you've made a living with it, you can also create a new life, a new business. So I found that from being um, downsized, that I was able to create a four-step proprietary system mindset, action, plan, and execution to teach other women. You mentioned that um, this journey began as, you know, in terms of becoming the turning point strategist from being downsized. So tell us more about your journey uh, and what you were doing prior to becoming the turning point strategist. Oh, actually, quite an interesting journey. I've, um, for over 25 years, I've served in uh, many financial capacities. I worked for uh, nonprofits um, and all were international nonprofits throughout um, the um, uh, United States. But the interesting part was that they were in Asia, Latin America, and um, Africa. And as a result of that, we actually taught and educated and um, created contracts for entrepreneurships throughout the world and where they utilize whatever resources they had. They utilize their skill set. And so we taught them how to create and market their businesses. And so throughout the world, we were dealing with um, small businesses and we did, I did small business development and financial um, planning. And so as a result of that, I got a great interest for entrepreneurship throughout the world as, as well as um, businesses for um, ex-offenders. I had an opportunity to um, teach and re-educate, reacclimate ex-offenders coming back into the, um, the work world. And so we thought that the best way to do that was to work with programs that would help them with small business development, because a lot of times it was difficulties um, getting jobs because of their previous um, their previous record. So uh, my background is finance and accounting. So also helping people to actually learn how to manage their, their funds and change their lifestyle as a result of learning how to be, uh, I think every woman should actually learn how to become her own um, chief financial officer. Because when you're gonna build a business, not only do you want to manage what you have, but you also wanna grow it, make it sustainable, and also um, build wealth. How do you, you know, go from being downsized to creating a, you know, a business? And what was that process for you? The process was, it started off really, it, it's so funny when you're, you know, you're thinking that everything is, you, you know, we especially when we plan out our lives, we plan our lives and we think everything is going well. And then there's this huge bump in the road. And, and for me, it happened twice. And I think the second time was probably the most challenging and difficult because um, at that time, um, I, it, it, I was working on my master's. And um, and had just recently found out it was this one was just 
so emotional because um, I found out that my mom on that Monday, that weekend actually, um, in May, and my birthday was in May, so it was like a couple of days before my birthday, that my mom had terminal cancer. Mm. And then I go into the office the next day and find out that I'm being downsized. Mm. So you can imagine with all of that going on in your head, you're trying to to regroup and think about what it is. And so at the time, my mom was my major concern. And um, so actually just going through that process, and that was extremely, again, I said, very emotional, that I, um, you know, had to overcome some emotional obstacles, you know, not only losing your job, but at the same time, you're thinking, you know, you're losing your mom. And my mom passed in less than two months. So it was really, really fast. And so um, it took me a minute because I, I had to, to grieve. And at the same time, you're thinking about your livelihood. And so I remember, you know, once I um, decided just to kind of just give myself some space and some time, I came back and decided, you know, that I'm looking at loss of income. I'm a little frustrated. You know, you look at your savings, they're being depleted. You, you know, no fault of your own, your impact, it impacts your self-esteem, your finances, and um, the loss is real. Mm -hmm. Losing a job um, and no comparison to losing, you know, your mom and losing, you know, family, but the loss is real. And so you have to, so I was thinking, I got to find a solution. And at this point, I think I don't want to go back to another job. I wasn't in a place. And that was during a time of recession. And so, um, and working nonprofits a lot, um, funding is always, so you have funding, international funding. You, so you have a lot of variables um, that were going on at the time. And I remember um, at a moment, I was feeling really sorry for myself. And then I realized, you know what? I'm too smart for this. I have options. I can, um, you know, there are things that I can do. So I, what I needed to do was take, um, I realized that, um, you know, I, my, I, my skill set, I had a very good skill set um, with the finance and the accounting and um, uh, business development. I, you know, taught. Um, so leadership training and I saw I had all this um, business development. And so I realized that, that I had a great set um, skill set and um, so I just, the first thing that I did was I said, I'm going to start my own business. And one of the good things is whenever you're in an industry and you've built partnerships and networks, you have um, a source or some people you can actually touch base with. Well, one of the great things about if you, you know, if you work well and you had good career um growth and development that you have people that you can tap into. And that's what I did. I went and I immediately talked to some partners, um, some um, employers, and of course it may, you know, your gifts make room for you. And so that opened doors for contracts and some opportunities for me to actually get started. And I tell you, I really have to tell you, I thought, and this is the craziest thing that I ever did just to actually just say, I'm not looking, for, I'm not going for another job. I don't want to do this. I'm just going to, you know, actually just launch out. And um, it actually was one of the most rewarding things that I had done because it grew and it thrived so much faster than I expected. Mm -hmm. So in um, a period of less than a year, I made six figures. Actually, that's really, really incredible it really was i mean and you know tell us more about the ideal of the business like how did you come up with this ideal and why did you think it would work well one because um i had so much experience working with small businesses and small business development and as a result of that i think all in my book i wrote a book about um turning point jump starting your business and as a result of that i knew that all my life, my, the, the quote in my book is, um, as long as I can remember, there was a businesswoman inside of me. So I remember growing up and not having role models or people that had their own business. So there was, there was no um, template or people, anyone that I knew, but I knew that I always wanted my own business. And I had a, a friend uh, that we've been friends for God, over 40 years since school, um, elementary school, and we always talked about it, but we never had someone to actually help 
support that dream or, um, you know, any guidelines, any templates, any role models. And so when I thought about doing it, I just said, I knew I did not want to go back to another job. And just the thought of thinking, oh, you work for a lot of nonprofits, some government funding, the possibilities of them selling and merging could happen again. And I just, just the thought of that was not appealing at all. And so I knew that I had to do something different. And once I started contacting supervisors and partners, and there was so much work, I actually had one um, employee for a good while. And so that was actually impressive too, because I just didn't know how big it would grow, what would happen, but I knew that um, I definitely had to do something. And so as a result of that, I created in the midst of being downsized, I also wrote my book during the time that I wasn't working. So while I um, was, you know, had given myself space for um, grieving over my mom, um, my younger sister um, helps people write books. And so she said, hey, why don't you write a book? You have so much information. You, um, you've been doing this for so long. And I'm like, oh, you know, yeah. And so I decided to do it. Well, that actually helped me actually realize that you know, not only can you write this book, but you can actually create a valuable, uh, profitable business. And so I wrote a book called Turning Point, Answering the Entrepreneur's Call. Can six, we see the book? Yes, six highly effective steps to jumpstart your business. Wonderful. Congratulations on that. Thank you. And so that was actually the beginning of, I think one of the great things about Turning Point, I am a lover of transformation and change, and I always have been. Uh, my master's is in strategic management and change and, and, and international change. So I love, it's something so fascinating about human nature and how we, how we go through so many different things, turning points in our lives, pivotal moments. Um, it doesn't matter what it is. I think that every part of who we are, what makes up our purpose and our power and um, our um, passion in life comes from strategic periods in our lives where whether it's painful or not, we actually generate and we re recognize, we, we, um, we reveal who we are, who we should be, who we should serve, and how we work in this world to actually transform other people's lives. So I am so um, amazed at um, hearing people's stories and how they pivot through life. And you know, whether it's life or death or um, any type of pain, the loss of a child, that how people actually are able to use those stories to change and impact and add to other people's, you know, to make a difference in someone else's life. So I think that when um, I was dealing with all of this. At the same time, I knew that there would be a way to actually utilize my story to actually support others. And that's basically what we do on a regular basis as, as, as people. We've, our story becomes somebody else's shortcut. You, for what you've learned, your story helps somebody to um, become a life learner and they don't have to start from point A because you've always found a way to make this a vital and an effective transition in your life where um, it speeds up their learning curve. And so I think that was one of the things that, um, because I always love change, it made it easy once I got over, you know, certain, um, obstacles. And I always say obstacles because I think that there are three major obstacles that were for me that actually, um, and I think self is probably one of all of ours, that we have to deal with self and the voices that we hear in our head and, 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 and controlling that mindset. And so whatever you're going to win, you first, we have to always start with our mindset. And so that was a key focal point of getting that mindset, okay, we're going to do this. It may be tough, no matter what, we just don't want another job. We're ready to move forward. And so those, you know, getting that mindset um, straight. And then the next thing I did was action, taking a strategic action and looking and saying, you know what, I'm going to reverse engineer this. I want to decide what I want my business, what my life to look like in a year. Um, when you're working and you're developing a career, you have a network 
there are resources and there are people that you've worked with and so many people that actually, even friends and families that actually use your gifts. And sometimes you don't realize the talents and the gifts that you have because you've been giving it away, you know, and I still, I get, I, I have um, nieces and nephews and I am so, it really blesses me to look at their lives and now that they're, um, they're most of them are millennials and to look at that I have seven, I'm the only sibling that doesn't have children and uh, seven and out of the seven, six of them are entrepreneurs. And oh, so, that's I'm, amazing. Yeah. Yeah, so it really blesses me, especially because they, I talk to them a lot. And so I actually like to see that 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 as a legacy. And so my family and my um, younger sisters, I would talk about building legacy. So right now where I'm actually um, working um, to include and incorporate wealth building as a part of my um, program. Because, um, and that was where the secrets of the Unconventional Millionaires came in as well, that program. Can you tell us about that? Oh, that is, has been, um, again, it, it's so funny because I, I have, um, in um, becoming an entrepreneur, I realized, what, even though I started my own business, that um, after building it a while, uh, you actually create another job. And so as, as building it, uh, even though I was successful, I had six, made, created six figure business. I also was still working a lot of hours. And I was, so I didn't have the time rich um, freedom that I wanted. And so I realized at that point that I also needed a coach. I needed someone that was where I wanted to go. I wanted, you know, a, a more time rich, um, freedom. I know I wanted to schedule to um, be able to um, scale up my income without actually having to work more hours. And long story short, I, I found the coach for me. And so she was doing basically what I wanted to do. And but she was working 30 hours a month. Who does that? Right? I know. Right? <laughs> <laughs> oh wow! And I was like thirty hours a month. That's unbelievable. And you know, and and for and because I worked nonprofits most of my life, we always had small departments, so we never had enough staff. So which meant you worked a lot of hours in order to get it done. And even though it was rewarding and you're making changes, nobody want to work sixty hours a week on a regular basis. So as a result of that, um, you know, I, I realized I needed to make that change. So. I, so the first thing I did then was to make that investment in um, my um, growth and my development by finding the right coach. And so that changed my life drastically because it gave me an opportunity to be able to see what I could, how I could scale up and at the same time help more people and uh, work smarter in areas that um, I um, hadn't thought about. And so as a result of that, one of the things that she had shared with us was she had created um, her first, when she started out, she actually created a series where she went and interviewed millionaires. And so when she said that, I thought that I found that so fascinating because again, I like people's stories and I think people's stories change lives. And so I thought, oh, I can do that. And I thought, well, but I don't know any millionaires. How am I going to do this? So I um, put it off for a minute, but it kept coming back to me because it was so fascinating. And uh, again, I um, a life. I believe in being a life learner, and then I know that we, if I want to become a millionaire, who better to learn from as someone that was had a job, created a business, and learned and became a self-made first generation millionaire. Absolutely. So I decided to um, start looking around. And um, and one of the things um, my uh, mentor, Mia Redrick, um, she um, kept saying, she said, millionaires are givers. They are, um, they love the, to, to, to support people. They, and, you know, she was telling us, and I was like, that sounds really so easy. Is that really true? Everything she said was true. Mm -hmm. They love to um, 
to um, if you validate them and you um, you know you, you appreciate what they're doing and you ask them questions, they were also giving. I did not have any struggles, so I began to look around, ask friends, um, think about people I knew, and. The key was, was so fascinating that these people are all around you, all around you. So I started with, I remember um, looking at, um, because I was, as I said, I was creating a business. So I went to, um, I had um, some other coaches and classes, you know, you take classes from different people. And so I started seeing this young man get up early in the morning on Facebook, um, having this free time, walking by the water. And um, so I was like, wow, he's got a lot of free time, but he's building a business. So I started checking him out and Dr. Will. And as a result of that, I decided, well, he gets up early. You know what? Let me just tag him and um, tell him that what I'm doing and see if he's interested. Well, he was my first yes my mentor said yes first he was my second yes so as a result of that actually just you know watching people um looking at facebook thinking about um, the type of um uh, millionaire that i want to interview um i found i mean in magazines i actually saw um South African, um, these top seven South African millionaires. That fascinated me too, because I had opportunity to, to go to South Africa, to go to Ghana. And so um, again, because of my nonprofit experience, I had worked with um, programs in, South, in, in Africa and Asia and different places. So again, that was fascinating. So I took their magazine cover and I went on Facebook to see if I could find a couple of these people. Sure enough, I found one of the persons and, and instant messenger her and it was so funny because i got a um you know you instant messenger some people and because they're important and they you know they have their own employees and assistants i got a thumbs down right and i thought no i don't do thumbs down <laughs> so i wrote again and i friended her and so long story short she said yes too so i found that it wasn't you had to do you know you have to um invest time um, in the type of people that you want to meet. And um, surprisingly, um, it was a lot easier than I thought I had. And once I started, then people started giving me recommendations. Have you thought of this person? No, I don't know that person. That's and, so uh, fun. I know what that is too, because the same way for this show, you interview yeah. somebody and they say, oh, I know someone else who would be great. And so mm -hmm. that's so cool. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's... Um, and so what I did was I created that as a, um, a life learning course where you, um, we, you learn from the interviewer, we ask key questions, um, always about how we got started, learning from their secrets. Um, all of them had early morning routines, learning from their routines and their habits. So those types of things that were invaluable in sharing. And at the same time, I decided to um, offset that and start in re interviewing colleagues and friends as the next generation. Because I have all these forerunners, people that are like me, they have their own business and building. And actually that's part one of their goals that they're actually going to you know, grow, build wealth and grow. And so I started um, interviewing them also as a learning curve for um, my clients to not only learn from millionaires, but also to look at yourself as the next generation. So what does that mean in terms of your planning, your future, your education, your mindset, because mindset is king. And that was, the, I think, what's so great about um, interviewing these people. They were from different walks of life. Um, some had been incarcerated. So it wasn't, a, you know, um, um, a foster kid, um, you know, single, married, the, the range was wide. Wonderful. So what we're going to do now is we're going to transition into my segment called Who Said That? Where oh, I'll okay. give you, yes, where I'll give okay. you a quote and a clue. You get one guess. And if you're able to uh, tell me who said that, I will donate a modest amount to the charity of your choice. Okay. Okay. Put on my thinking cap. <laughs> awesome. So do you have a charity in mind? Um, yes. I work with um, Kids of Hope 
with Dr. Hokey. I and know her. Uh, She's been on the show. Yes, yes, she has. And I'm on her board, and we um, and we're um, working on supporting, especially those kids that are opt out, at um, and you know, with you know, sometimes end up homeless. So yes, yes, kids of hope. Wow. Um, yes, kids of hope would be yes. Fantastic. And so the quote is, live like no one else so you can live like no one else. Oh, my goodness. Live like no one else. Live like no one else. So you can live like no one else. And would you like the clue? Yes, because I heard that one. (laughs) Yeah, it's one of my favorites from this person. And this person is an American personal finance advisor radio show host, author, and businessman. He is an evangelical Christian and hosts a nationally syndicated radio show. He's written several books, including the New York Times bestseller, The Total Money Makeover, and hosted a television show on Fox Business from 2007 to 2010. Oh my gosh, I know this one. Oh my gosh. I know you know this one. Oh my gosh, and I'm, it is not coming. Oh my goodness, I know who that is. Oh, Les Brown. No. No, that's not Les Brown. Well, you, you gave us you gave us your guess, but the act the answer is actually Dave Ramsey. Oh yes. I could not think of his name. I was trying to see his face. Oh wow. I'm disappointed. Yeah, I actually, I've donated to Kids of Hope before. Actually, when uh, Oki was on here, she did not get hers correct either. But, no. I, <laughs> but I believe. I, I'll tell her I try to raise money yeah. for her. Tell I her I'll, tell, I'll so. still send a, a donation of support because I know the both of you and I know the good work you're doing. But right. yeah, Thank but you. don't Thank feel you. bad. Yeah, you're not the only one who's not gotten there. Oh my yeah, gosh. Before. Do you have any you. final words? So one of the things I think that um, I would say to folks that are interested in creating a business or or uh, want to do what you love and, and and make it a part of your lifestyle, um, look at what you do and and what your family and your friends and people that pull from you. What do they say? What transformation do you give and develop for them? And you'll sometimes find the answers to creating or shifting your life in a way that you do what you love and you make money doing it.